Hello and welcome to another craft tutorial in our Cricut Basics series. Uh, this is the series that's aimed to answer the questions that come up most frequently in our Cricut Crafters UK Learning, Helping, Sharing Facebook group. So if you're not a member of that already, the link will be in the video description. Go and join us. We are a really friendly bunch and we love helping each other. So today's tutorial is all about the keyboard. Hence the lovely keyboard cam that you can see right now. So you may not be aware that in Cricut Design Space, a lot of the keyboard shortcuts you would use in other software can also be used here. So I thought I would uh, go through today all the ones that I know of. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is insert a shape just so I can show you some of the shortcuts that we have. So I'm going to start with a basic square. Now I say I wanted to have another square, I could obviously click here, draw another square, or I could right click and press duplicate. But instead, I can use copy and paste like you would in any other Microsoft program. So I can press Control C and then Control V and it will paste another copy. And if I keep pressing Control V, it will keep pasting more squares in. Similarly, I can cut, which means to like completely take it out. I can press Control X and that will get rid of it. I can press Control V and it will bring it back. And if I keep pressing Control V, I'll get more copies of that. Uh, so if you want to move your squares around the canvas, the workspace, you can click and drag it around. But if you want to move more precisely, we can use the arrow keys. Say we only wanted to move left and right, or we only wanted to move up and down. We can nudge it around. If we hold down the shift key while we're nudging, it nudges it around a bit quicker. So we get bigger leaps. Now at the moment, I'm going to get rid of all of these by clicking and dragging and pressing delete. Or if I wanted to get rid of these using a keyboard shortcut, I could press control A and that will select everything and then press delete. If I change my mind and want all the squares back, I could push the undo button up here or I could use the keyboard shortcut, control Z. And then if I decide that actually I want to undo my undo or redo deleting the squares, I would go control shift Z and they're gone again. So for the next example, I'm going to add in a few more shapes again. This time I'm going to add in a circle. So at the moment, we've got the padlock on on this circle, which means as we make drag it in the corner to make it bigger or smaller, it drags in proportion. It stays as a circle. Whereas if we click the padlock, we can freely resize it to make it into an oval. But say we want to have the padlock off for some reason, but still resize this as a circle, what we'd do is we'd press down the shift button on the keyboard, keep it held down and click and drag. And that way it's still constrained. I can't accidentally turn it into an oval like I could before. For the next example, I'm gonna bring a triangle into the mix. And let's colour him. What am I feeling today? I'm feeling red. Let's have our red triangle friend here. If we rotate him in the corner, we can put him anywhere within the 360 degrees of rotation. Which is good if you're really feeling abstract with your patterning. But if you want a more constrained rotating, you can hold down the shift button while you click and drag and that will move you in smaller segments. I think it's 45 degree segments it's moving in each time. 
So if you're making geometric patterns, this gives you a lot more control over what can be achieved. Now I want another shape for the next example. So I use my control C, control V, and you see how quick that was. When you memorize all these, you'll be whizzing things around in no time. So if we've got our three shapes on top of each other, I might take the design decision that this is perfect, you know, these are all in the right position, but I want the circle at the back to be on top of the other two. So what we would normally do is go arrange, move forward, arrange, move forward, or arrange, centre back, arrange, centre front. But of course, there is a shortcut we can use instead. So we will hold down the control button and use the square bracket keys over here. So control and the left bracket moves it backwards. Control and the other square bracket moves it forwards. So go forward, back, forward, back. Uh, other shortcuts that are very common elsewhere in Windows work here too. So control S will allow us to save our project. And control shift at S will allow us to save as. Uh, the last two, I'm not sure how useful these are, but most of us know that we can use the middle mouse wheel on any web page, for example, to scroll up and down. And of course, this works within design space. But if we hold down the shift button while we're scrolling, we'll go left and right, which is just a little bit quicker than clicking and dragging. And if we press space, zoom down the page. I'm not quite sure if that's useful for anything but you can do it so why not? So these are all the keyboard shortcuts that I can think of. If I have missed any I would love to hear them so that I can update this video. Um, come join us again in the Cricut Crafters UK learning, helping, sharing group. We'd love to see you there. And for more Cricut related posts and other craft goodness, come and subscribe to the newsletter on my website. And that's at mamamakesdo.com. Until the next tutorial, goodbye.